Yeah, Traniacs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open for freshness. What's in the box? What's in the box? Excited. What we've got here are the Nike Free Flynet 4%. These, maybe, we'll see today, are going to potentially be the running shoes that I wear for Half Ironman Puerto Rico. I use the Zoom Flies in Half Ironman Worlds and all my speed work last year, and uh, I really liked them. And this today is gonna be the final key long run, fast run session that we do. So hopefully these make me like scientifically guaranteed to be 4% faster in the run Half Ironman Puerto Rico. Science. But you know what? Today isn't about these shoes. If you want to see the full review of these in the next few weeks, make sure you're subscribed because I haven't even ridden them yet. Today is about run pods and how to get a run pod that communicates with Zwift running for a Zwift running setup. I actually talked with my contacts over at Zwift and I got some nitty gritty details about some of the run pods that work, some of the run pods that work amazingly, and some of the run pods that um, are works in progress. So let's do that right after this run. Also, it's an all the colors kind of running day. Blue, green, black, green, red, purple, blue, blue. I'm so Yeah, Traniacs, yes, yes. That was encouraging. These, I think they're legit. Make sure you're subscribed for the full review. I am pumped about that. That was, uh, that was an hour 35 run, going 19 and a half K. And uh, go follow me on Instagram if you're not. I'll post a, a picture of me running in all the colorful clothes with the full details. Oh, it felt good. Oh, oh, it felt good. Okay, let me go pretty up and we'll talk about some run pods for Zwift running. Oh, 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 yeah. All right, Trinias, let's talk about running foot pods that you can use to get Zwift running. I guess that's it. All right, so if you want to get Zwift running, there's a few ways that you can go about it. Number one, and the easiest way to get into it, is with a foot pod that measures every single foot stride, the speed and the distance, the cadence that you are running, and then it calculates that into a running pace, communicating that with Zwift, so that it propels you forward at a faster, slower rate, and it displays your cadence and your pace on Zwift running. Now, the other alternative is a Zwift compatible treadmill. We'll talk about that in another video, but most commonly people are using running pods with Zwift. And when I was in Zwift, they told me that they are constantly testing running pods, not just their own Zwift running pods, but things like this, the Stride running pod, Garmin, all these different running pods, and they have an updated list of the Zwift compatible foot running pods. And what we're gonna talk about is just these Zwift supported foot running pods. And there are a bunch out there that I'm sure you can hack in, but long run, it's safest just to get yourself a Zwift supported run pod. And one of the most commonly known foot running pods is the former Milestone running pod, which is now the Zwift run pod. This is the cheapest way to get into it. it costs about 30 bucks. It's actually Zwift's own foot running pod weighs 13 grams, it does require battery replacement. It's fairly basic. It measures speed, distance, cadence. Connects via Bluetooth and while Fell Runner, which does a lot of calculations comparing foot pods to GPS devices to 
smartphones and seeing which ones are the most accurate. It rated the Milestone running pod as fairly accurate, but if you look on some of the forums all around the internet, they'll say that the Zwift running foot pod isn't necessarily the most reliable. I asked my contacts at Zwift about this and they said they are aware of all of those comments and that the nice thing about that technology is if there is in fact anything that they can do to improve it, it's going to get improved with firmware and software updates. So easiest way to get into it and if there are issues with it that are in fact the case, it's going to be improved in the future, hopefully. Now, even though that is Zwift's own foot pod, they highly recommend the Stride running foot pod. I like the Stride running foot pod. That said, it is by far the most expensive coming in at $200. It does, however, measure a lot more metrics than just that speed, distance, cadence. It measures all of that extremely accurately. Fell Runner actually said that this without calibration, whereas the Zwift run pod needs frequent calibration, this without calibration is more accurate than most GPS, like all GPS watches. It also measures things like leg spring stiffness, ground contact time, stride length, a bunch of different things that you can then use to start dialing in your training. Like in my case, I'm not able to do a whole lot of long runs because I'm not quite as durable. As I start doing lots and lots of long runs, I start getting lots and lots of injuries. And sure enough, what this says is based off of the interaction with my foot on the ground during long runs, I end up breaking down and it recommends more long runs to, for me. And I'm like, you know me better than I know myself, Stride. Now this connects via Bluetooth. It's also only 10 grams, so even lighter and like I said, Zwift has mentioned that they really like this. They say that it's extremely accurate and there's a good chance that they are going to start incorporating some of those additional metrics that this measures into the experience in Zwift running. Stride also has a Zwift Live version of this, which actually this orange clip is from, but this is the full version. And that is just a Zwift only limited edition run that frankly isn't really even available if you can find one. It is less expensive, but it also doesn't have really any of those features. However, apparently Zwift says that it works just fine without all of those fancy features of leg spring stiffness and all the additional training data that you get. And this doesn't require battery replacement. That's partly why it's so light. It just has a charging dock that it sits on to recharge. So those are the two key ones, budget, basic, Full featured, very accurate, lots of training data that you can pull out of it. Now there are some other options to consider. There's the Polar Stride Sensor, which is kind of tough to find out there. You can find it on Amazon, ranging anywhere between about 80 and $124. Still a little bit less full featured than this. It measures speed, cadence, stride length, and distance. Connects via Bluetooth, however, it is the largest of all of these sensors at 15 grams. It is about the length and the width of an egg while being about half as thick. So it's a little bit bulkier. It also requires battery replacement when it runs out. Now the thing about the Polar Stride sensor is that it's not rated as being tremendously accurate. It does require frequent calibration. And even at that point, Fell Runner ranks it kind of around like a smartphone, an iPhone 4 as far as the accuracy. And then the last foot pod sensor that Zwift supports is the Garmin Ant foot pod sensor, which I don't really even know why you'd get it. I think it's kind of being phased out. It is also fairly hard to find online. It does only cost about $80, but because it's Ant Plus, you typically, if you are going to stream to a phone or an iPad, which most people are going to do, you're going to need an Ant Plus key and a lightning port to get it into an iPhone. So that could take the $80 foot pod, get it all the way up to $160, $180 price tag. It is quite accurate. It does require battery replacement. It does require calibration, but when you start looking at it, it all starts coming together to be about the same sort of price as Stride, but doesn't have all the features and doesn't really even seem to be a big focus for Garmin because it's not really available everywhere, why not just spend your money on that? So if you are going to spend money, it seems like all things are going towards Stride. If you want something a little bit more budget, go for the Zwift Run Pod. 
just know that if you get that Zwift run pod, there may be some updates that you've got to go through before it gets to be tremendously accurate. A final thing to note is that even if I'm not using Zwift running and I'm just going for a treadmill run, I will quite often use this and sync to my watch because it's so accurate. Meanwhile, that treadmill and a lot of treadmills are so inaccurate, like I'm talking 0.4 miles per hour off in some cases, that I will often use this to dial in my pace. So it's not just for Zwift running, it's to when you want to start doing really specific workouts at really specific paces and have it be replicable, workout over workout over workout, these help. So all right, Trainiacs, if you wanna get yourself into Zwift running, I highly recommend it. A Couple of years ago when I was doing long runs on the treadmill of even 50 or 60 minutes, very difficult to get through. And meanwhile, this year I've been doing 95 minute treadmill workouts here and they've been perfectly enjoyable. All right, that's it for today. If you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed, check out some of the other popular Zwift videos that we've got up here and here. Pete loves Zwift, he loves it. He's also a really big camera hog. When I start talking, you wanna get involved. Mm, later, Trainiacs.